Hello, good morning, good afternoon or evening and welcome to PLD Three Colours Live. It is really great to see everyone here. PLD is a series of creative photo challenges designed to help you grow your creative thinking. Now, if you've never been here before and you'd like to find out more, please have a look in the description area below where you will find a link to my website that will tell you all about it. Great to see everyone here. So cool watching everyone have a bit of a chat as we kick off and get going. <coughs> Excuse me, some of you regulars may notice the background has changed a bit. I am somewhere else, still broadcasting to you live from New Milton Photographic in the south coast of the sunny New Forest. If you ever need any prints doing or anything like that, come and see these guys if you're in this area because Ian and Lou really are the best and two of the loveliest people you can imagine. I'm in the same place, Gary. It's just that usually I am sitting over there. I think I'm looking in the right place. Where are we going? Here we go. I'm usually sitting over there. No, I'm not. I'm usually sitting over there in that desk there. And that desk there is what is usually behind me. <clears throat> but I've moved things around and I've got a different little space. So there we go. It's not quite as tidy behind perhaps, but it is what it is. You are very observant. New glasses. Yes. I've had to stop buying the ready readers off the shelf and gone to the optician. It's horrific. I've got these bifocal things. You're all blurry when I do that. And then you go sharp when I do that. It is a very strange thing indeed. So let me move my screens around so that I can see what I'm doing a little better. <clears throat> so I was truly blown away, really by the way everyone jumped right on in. There is some awesome photography here and I just want to ask a question. The take up on this challenge was really very exciting and the quality of the photography is really good. Now, three colors challenge, it's, it's a very generic thing. Do you think that's why? What appealed to you about this challenge? I would love to know. Please just pop a quick comment in uh, the chat because I just love to know because obviously, you know, the more engaging the challenges are for you guys while still being challenges, the better because it helps you grow your creativity, but also it gets more people engaged in doing it. So, um, yeah, please just pop a little thing. What, what, what drew you to this challenge? Because there were some amazing, there are some amazing entries. <clears throat> it was different, says Alec. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. I will have a little look in your chat as you get a chance to type them because here we go. It stretched to you, said Moose. Michael already knew what he was going to do. <laughs> really interesting. Yeah, it made you think a bit harder. That's really, really cool. <clears throat> so this was really an exercise in seeing, you know, you really do have to look at a potential image and be careful with the composition to make sure some sneaky unwanted color doesn't gate crash your photo. Yeah, you really have been incredibly creative. It's been good to see some new names in the challenge as well as entries from some folks who've not entered our challenges for a while. Welcome back. We've missed you. It's good to see you. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who supports these challenges because it does take a little bit longer than you might think for Emma and I to administer them. But, you know, it's fun. We kind of want to keep them going. Now, if you'd like to sponsor this live session, you can click the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat, sponsor a question or just buy everyone a sticker. If you find these challenges valuable and would like to make a small regular contribution, there is a link in the description area below. Thank you to everyone who already does that. So we will finish this session in around an hour. We will look at a few pictures in the album, do a bit of feedback, have a little bit of a chat, might ask a few questions. And then we will look at my chosen uh, runners up and winners. Although this isn't really a competition, it's a challenge and it's really just for fun. Um, I'm just looking at some of your comments here as well in the chat as to why you liked this challenge. I thought it was really cool. Now, who is it who said, Clive just said it sounded like a restrictive theme, but actually it made you think about how shots can be formed from a limited palette. And did anyone else notice that how, when you keep things really simple, just three colors and a very simple image, actually that image is often stronger because it is really tempting to try and put too much in. 
to try and do too much with an image, whereas when you keep it simple, sometimes it is so much stronger. And I think that is one of the cool things, why the, the standards are so high, you know, from, from some unexpected places too. <coughs> so that is really great. Alex said, even had my wife looking for subjects. That is really cool. And I'm glad you like the three color background, <laughs> especially the little emergency exit. Where is it? It's up there. Everything I'm looking at on my screen is of course reversed. Slightly different system going on here tonight. So let's hope it works smoothly. So why don't I get my screen ready? Let's go have a look and see what we have got in our album. Here we go. I think as you can see straight away, there was some really, really cool stuff going on in this challenge. Um, the standard was just so high. Moose, thank you very much indeed. So are you, sir. <clears throat> there are many images which I was deeply drawn to. It was very, very hard to choose, and I just kind of had to go along with what I felt was the strongest image. It's a gut feeling, of course. You can't please all the people all the time. Um, and any criticisms or critiques or feedback I give are coming from a place of actually wanting to help. Um, and I'm going to try and choose images which I think will help the most people of, you know, varying levels and standards of photography. So <clears throat> let's get going. Now, I have to say, as soon as I saw this one here from Rafael, I liked it. I do think it works really, really well as an image. Um, it's intriguing. And I love this little satellite dish down here. That to me is the thing. It's, it's, it's breaking up that symmetry. It's just kind of intruding a little bit. Again, such a simple, simple picture with some great textures, some great angles and some great uh, perspectives going on here. And of course, very much well, okay, if you want to be really picky, what have we got? We've got the yellows of the building, we've got whites of clouds and dish, we've got blue of the sky, and yes, there are a little bit of black in there, but you know, the predominant colours, there are three of them. I like the angle you've composed this at, uh, Raphael, obviously, technically, spot on, great exposure. You've got some nice light too. Look at these long shadows coming off the edges of these windows. They're all adding shapes and textures. I think it's a really interesting, great, abstract, well spotted, very well spotted, nicely done. Mike, <clears throat> so I get it, you have got three colours, undoubtedly, um, and yeah, I, I, it's kind of interesting, it's very, very vertical, isn't it? Um, to be honest, Mike, I think you could have done with just a touch more exposure. I can see there's some banding in the background. It could be Facebook's compression because it does do some very weird things. Look at this. Look, I've just had a Facebook message come flying up. Um, I'm not going to answer it right now, but I'm delighted to see it. That's um, Dill Cade, who used to be editor-in-chief at 500px, just pinging me a message because we wanted to have a catch-up. He's such a lovely guy. He is no longer editor-in-chief at 500px, but he is a lovely guy. Back to what we're supposed to be talking about. So I think, Mike, a little bit more exposure would have helped. You've got some quite nice light. There is a slight differential in the shadows here. It's a difficult subject. It's the sort of subject that works when you've got very, very strong side light, really, or something really interesting going on behind it. I'm not sure you needed to crop it quite so tight, but nonetheless, Good on you, you gave it a go, you, you got stuck in there, but maybe just a little bit more exposure would have made it just that bit brighter, made those whites a little brighter. But nonetheless, nice one. What else have we got going on here? There are so many, aren't there? Look at them, there are so many. Um, Carrie, I, I do like your daisy here. The thing I really like is it looks to me as though it's raining. And that, I think, really makes this an interesting shot. I love the way you have managed to get your shutter speed in just the right place to catch those little streaks of these raindrops, yet it's still frozen one or two of the drips that are coming off the flower. Uh, that's quite a thing. Um, Carrie's saying, that isn't mine. It's got your name on it. <laughs> What's this one up here? 
Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I think it looks, I think it's a great shot. There are only really three colors. There is one in, there is one color invading a bit and that's this sort of pink. These are things to watch out for. Um, oh, I see you post it for your niece. Sorry, Carrie, whatever. It's your entry. Um, even if you didn't take it, I'm going to give your niece some feedback then. <clears throat> I think it's a great photo. I really do. Really like it. Love the movement in those raindrops, those drops of water, that little pool of water around the top, and the very fact that the flower itself is nice and still, because when it's being pummeled by rain, it could so easily wobble. I think it is a really, really nice shot. Indeed, Sue Owen. Well done, Carrie's niece. I don't know what your name is, but... Congratulations, I think it's a really great shot. Ruggiero, again, you, you, you've done a great job of seeing something, you know, really simple. And look how strong all these images are. Because, you know, we've just got the three colors. I like your use of depth of field, the way you are telling us what to look at. And I also like your composition. You, you put a bit of a twist on the camera. Um, and it, is, it, is, it works. What more can I say? You've got some nice colors going on there. To me, it doesn't look completely sharp. Now, again, whether that's a Facebook uh, compression thing or not, I don't really know because Facebook is an awkward beast, isn't it? We never quite know what it's going to do. But you've got some great colors there. And these are the things to notice. You know, when you're taking a shot, just, just look at this big orange blob in the background. Now, yes, it is very strong. Personally, I don't mind that because the depth of field is, is, is so shallow, so we know where to look. But look how Ruggiero has not actually cropped the edge of this flower in the background. It would be very easy to miss that and just sort of run the edge of the shot down the edge here and just crop it. It's been very carefully composed. This is one of the important things with photography. It's always good to look all around, look at the whole picture. Don't just look at the subject. Because the subject is always gonna be there. It's about looking around the whole shot, making sure that everything comes together as a whole. Because when we do it with our eyes, we, you know, I look at you and you're in the middle, but out to either side, I can actually still see, you know, if I do, where are we? Waggling my fingers. Everybody waggle their fingers. Get everyone else in the room looking at you like you're mad. Look, my, ha my hands are right either side of my head, but I can see my fingers waggling. But when we look at a scene, we'd ignore that because our brains just sort of go straight to whatever it is we're looking at, our subject. Thank you very much indeed, Stuart Anthony. <clears throat> what else have we got going on here? Well, obviously, <laughs> We've got a great, fun and very brave shot here from Crystal Craig. I love the fact you've used three colours and I just think it is great fun. Now, I noticed somebody said in the contents, in the, sorry, comments, Nan said that she loved the series of images you did of the clean-up operation afterwards where you used makeup. Um, I didn't actually see those, but I do think it is, it's a great, fun picture. And I think you're really brave to post it because... Let's be honest, it's probably not the most flattering picture of you that you could have taken, but it's fun and it adheres to the brief. Um, and thank you for posting it. And by the way, if anyone's got any questions, please feel free to ask because, you know, we're here. That's what I'm here for as well. I, I am keeping an eye on the chat. So I've got a slightly different system going on tonight and it should make it a bit easier for me to keep track of everything and make this work. Stephen Robson, I mean, yep, obviously we've got three colours and technically perfectly executed. This is not necessarily an easy thing to do at all. You have got the shutter speed fast enough to freeze that little, those little droplets. Now I'm guessing you possibly used a flash. If you're here, Stephen, I'd love to know. Because when you fire a flash burst at something, it doesn't really matter how long the shutter's open for, so long as the available light is fairly low. Because it's the flash burst that is going to freeze the motion. I would love to know how you lit this, Stephen, if you're here. <clears throat> You've got some beautiful shapes going on. Um, there's some really nice, subtle sort of colours. And, and when doing this with a flash, it would be very, very easy 
to burn something out, to overdo it, and you haven't done that. Now, my feedback for you, Stephen, would be that you've done a great job technically, but it's kind of like the composition. I'm just wondering, what if we saw the little stem of this glass? What if we sort of saw it as, a, as, a, as an entity in itself rather than just the top? Or if you are shooting just the very top, you know, the point of interest is obviously that beautiful little sort of splash going on. <clears throat> Let's do the finger crop. I'm just thinking, what would it be like if I just kind of take it out, take some of the bottom off that big round bowl, you know, it almost come in quite a lot just on that area in the middle. I don't think you need to include so much of the glass bowl. Maybe if you'd had the whole glass with the stem and everything going on as well, it might have worked a little better. Technically, superbly executed, well thought out and very well done. And a great, you know, you follow the brief perfectly. Um, what else have we got? Let's have a little look. Let's have a little scroll through. David. <clears throat> I can really see what you've gone for here. And I love the fact, yes, you've spotted something with only three colors, something which really should work, that should be great, because you've got some great textures as well going on here. Um, I love the keys on top of this sort of rusty old box. But it isn't quite working as powerfully as maybe it could. And I think it's the direction of the light also, maybe, I don't know if you could have done this, if you've got absolutely square on, these sorts of shapes often work well as a very graphic image. You've got the lovely sort of arch. You should be able to see my mouse. Yes, you can. Good. So you see we've got this lovely arc across the top here, and we've got all these vertical lines and textures going on. I think maybe if we didn't see the edge of the box and it was just very, very flat, square on, that might have helped. Also... If the light came round a little bit more, so it was washing completely across it, rather than being slightly backlit, that might have helped. Of course, it may not do that. I totally get that. <clears throat> we can't always make the light do what we want it to do, or it doesn't go where we want it to go when we want to take the shot. There are times when, of course, we have to revisit at a different time of year even. Um, but good on you for giving it a go, for spotting something which has got all the ingredients to really work and for entering the shot. You have got some quite nice light on it. Well done. I like the way you've kind of put it together and all that, but I just think maybe the graphic might have helped the more flat, straight on sort of a look. Stella. <clears throat> I mean, what can one say? It is a great still life image, isn't it? You know, you've done that really, really beautifully. You've taken a lot of care and a lot of trouble. The light is absolutely spot on. I love the way it's just sort of slightly coming from behind. How do we know it's coming from behind? <clears throat> That's a real question. Somebody type a comment. How do we know the light is coming from behind? And the reason I'm asking the question is for maybe people who are a little bit confused about light. You know, maybe they're thinking, how did he know the light's coming from behind? What is it about the light coming from slightly behind that makes it work? Um, you know, so somebody just pop a little thing in there and just say, how do we know? Because it's very subtle light. Light will make or break an image. <clears throat> Completely make or break. You can have the most amazing composition of the most gorgeous scene or person or whatever it may be. Um, but if the light isn't working for it quite right, it isn't quite going to work. Yeah, exactly. So look, you see, this isn't just me saying these things. You see, some of our members in the group here, some of our photographers are sort of saying, look at the highlights and the shadows. <clears throat> so Stella's got a bit of light coming from kind of behind, somewhere over here. Because look, we've got that slightly brighter area of banana. And then we've got this nice, cleanly defined line running around here where the edge of the shadow is. And that is what's giving this banana the shape. And also, look, these little highlights, they're all in the same sort of position. They're coming, they're just slightly round the back and above from over here. 
<coughs> excuse me, and all these little highlights, they will bring the scene to life. They bring out all these little textures in the fabrics. It's a beautifully executed still life stellar. What more can I say? And I just wanted to mention it because anyone who's a little confused about light, and let's face it, light is a strange thing to get your head around because, you know, we don't notice light. We go, I can see stellar. There is light. But what we have to do as photographers is to learn to look at stellar and go, what sort of light is on stellar? Is it hard direct light? Is there a strong nose shadow? So, I mean, if you look at me in that little inset thing there, the light is different to the way it was last time we did this because everything is different. I've got a wall in front of me now and a light just up over here to the side. And so I've got a slightly darker side away from the light and a slightly lighter side. I'm being lit by the light bouncing off this white wall and the light is coming in from this side. It's looking at something and going, okay, where are the shadows, where are the dark bits, where are the bright bits? And that starts to help us understand qualities of light. Beautifully executed shot, Stella, and of course, right on theme. Now, <laughs> there are so many here that I just want to spend time on. I love this one, George. <coughs> I really do. This is absolutely a bit of me. I like the way you've let it go into silhouette because, you know, it just wouldn't have worked because the sky is obviously quite light and the way you've let that go grey um, on a grey day. But I do think it's a really good, fun picture. It, it's kind of interesting, you know, what is going on here? Um, and just, just the look of it, there's something almost painterly about it. Now, George, I'm not sure, did you crop this rather heavily? George, you're often here. Um, I'm just thinking, it looks kind of lumpy around the edges. Nonetheless, I still think it's an intriguing and interesting shot. Um, yes. <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, also look how George has cropped it to get the composition. This is one of the things. We've got a very kind of strong implied diagonal look. It's running from the top left through the aerials and the chimney to the bottom right. And then we've got these little points of interest along the way. Look how George has positioned the aerial and the chimney on this side to sort of hold that side of the shot together. Um, you know, and then we've got these guys working on the roof down the other side. Yeah, okay, it's cropped heavily, and that's why we've got a bit of noise and pixelation and sort of jaggedy edges. But nonetheless, it still kind of works, and, it, and it's a really great composition. Look at these things. Remember, don't just look at the subject. Look at the whole image. Look at the whole picture. They were taking all the tiles off, says George. What were they doing with them? <clears throat> but it's a great shot. I think this is great fun too from Helen. <clears throat> it's just a, it's, it's, it's a nice, calming sort of an image, isn't it? Um, so I can see from her comment, Helen has said ICM. That stands for Intentional Camera Movement. So... What we're talking about here is that Helen just moved the camera a little bit during the exposure to create something a little bit more arty. It's not that this is an out of focus shot, it's that Helen used a slower shutter speed so that that camera movement would create a little bit of softness and blur and, it, and it's done it really, really well. It's uh, obviously on brief, we've got two colors, we still know what's going on, but it is an intriguing image. It's pretty. I think that's the word. Ian, lovely little, look at this. I mean, you know, look, look how simple that is. But also, what is it that's making this really work? What is it that's really making this shot pop? I'm welcoming any comments in the chat. Please, pop something in there. <clears throat> and if you're not sure, don't be afraid to have a go at leaving a comment. Don't just think, oh, hang on, there's a bunch of really great photographers here who know what they're talking about. Yes, there are. But look, give it a go. If you're not sure, nonetheless, give it a go. Because there are several things at play. But to me, there is one which is really what is making this work. And we've talked about it a couple of times on several images already. What do we got? I'm just going to have a little scroll in your comments and just see. Look at all those comments coming in. Well done, you guys. 
and girls. Now interesting, you see now because everybody has slightly different ideas because we're all attracted by different things and that is completely cool, that is completely okay. There are two really strong things. There's several strong things about this. We've got lots of greens and this sort of orangey red. Orangey reds and greens, they're best mates. The blue, I don't know whether it adds anything or not, but it, it kind of works. And, and by carefully composing the shot, Ian's kind of lined up those little buds against the blue, which does help them really, really stand out. Ian's used a very shallow depth of field and focused very, very carefully. Look, that flower here is absolutely razor sharp. You could shave yourself on that. Not even Facebook managed to ruin the sharpness of this shot. But for me, the thing that really, really does it is our old friend, light. Because look at it, remember the banana. See this little highlight running along here? And there's another one running along here. All these little highlights and shade, highlight and shade, highlight and shade. They're giving a texture to the stem. Look how it's making the shape of these petals, highlight and shade, highlight and shade. It's all highlight and shade. And it's this directional backlight. It is a wonderful thing, soft directional backlight. That is really the thing that's making it because <clears throat> if you didn't have that highlight and shade, but you still had the same subject, beautifully composed, and pin razor sharp with a shallow depth of field, it wouldn't be as strong without that little gentle light. It's about learning to spot that light. The other thing that's going on here is it's bringing this little flower to life because flower petals are slightly translucent, and the light is just coming through the inside. Look at the textures just inside here. The textures it's bringing out here, the angle of the light. Really, really great image, Ian. Well put together, it's strong, it's well on brief. <clears throat> I wish I could say I took it further, but unfortunately, as you all know, I have my light. I look at it and I go, oh, which ones am I gonna take out? And there are so many in this, this, this particular one. How can we not talk about Neil's? Now, I guess it's a meerkat. <clears throat> but it is. A really engaging picture again right on brief three colors look how effective it is just to have three colors just to keep the shot nice and simple so we know what it's about just as Ian did we've got a shallow depth of field going on so that our meerkat is separated from the background for me one of the things that really works here also is you've been pretty brave with this composition neil now when i was going through these sort of trying to go like oh how am i going to choose i got about 20 images in here and i can only have six <clears throat> lou who owns new milton photographic with her husband ian she was in the office here with me and we were looking at them together and of course everyone has a different point of view now lou's point of view was meerkat should be on the other side of the picture she she didn't she, she didn't dislike it, but she said for her, the meerkat needed to be on this side over here. What do you think? Because there's no right or wrong. Please just say right or left in the chat. I'm really intrigued to know what you think. Um, <coughs> like the negative space. I totally agree, Nan. I totally agree. Um, Ram saying you love the left to left composition. That's a really great one. Now look, Paul wants it on the right, Yvonne wants it on the right, George likes it as it is on the left, Beverly likes it on the left, Emma loves it as it is. Some prefer it on the right, some on the left. There's a slight edginess when you put a portrait subject kind of on the edge of the picture when they're not looking into the picture. Um, they're kind of looking out of the picture. It gives it a slight edgy quality. And it often works very well. Sometimes it doesn't. But there is a, what they call, you know, a rule. I hate these rule things where they say your subject should always look into the picture. <clears throat> these rules are great places to begin when you're starting out with photography. 
because generally speaking it works but the thing is everyone does it <laughs> and we live in a world of Instagram where trying to hold someone's attention for more than three seconds <laughs> that's a pretty tough challenge I really like it I really like it I like it on the left I think it's a great composition technically bang on looks like meerkat's eyes aren't quite pin sharp but hey you know that could be a Facebook thing but also with animals and a tiny shallow depth of field how easy is it for the animal to move itself out of focus that little creature's only got to move like really sort of you know that much and oof, your focus is off it's like focus and shoot focus and shoot and even if you focus and shoot you know you, you focus and then the animal looks the other way and it, it takes a lot of patience great shot Neil I really like the way you've done this where should we go now I uh, think we need to come here to Graham's awesome smoke bomb shoot I saw some of the other images you took I mean you know it really is it's 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 a really great portrait Graham um, I just think it's, it's, it's great fun. And, you know, using smoke bombs, it, it makes interesting shots. Um, it really does. Right on theme, we've got greens, we've got blacks, we've got a bit of, you know, green, black, flesh tone, <clears throat> and obviously white. Okay, we're up to four, really. But our predominant colours, there's really only three of them. Once again, the whole point of this exercise, really, was to try and help everyone, to challenge everyone to start looking for some really simple things. Um, I don't know if you're here, Graham. Um, is this someone you know? Is this um, someone who asked you to do a portrait? You know, I'm, I'm intrigued to know the story behind it because she looks really comfortable and at ease doing what she's doing and, you know, being photographed. And this is all part of it with photographing people because you do really have to engage with that person in order to get the best out of them. Hi, Graham. Glad you're here. <clears throat> and yes, you know who this person is. Yeah, absolutely. If you're doing it with a stranger who isn't a professional model, it really is quite important that you know, you know your camera stuff um, so that you don't need to think about it because all your energy all your focus is on them and trying to bring the best out of them uh, graham says okay so she's a model great and i would recommend anybody who wants to learn more about um, photographing people a really great way to learn is to hire a professional model don't just get an amateur model don't do you know prints for time because you'll have an amateur model who doesn't really know what they're up to they're just trying to build a portfolio and mm. invest a little bit of money hire a professional model who knows what they're doing and tell them where you are just say look you've been doing this for years and and I'd really like to learn a little bit more about about this you know because professional models know what to do they they do it without you having to direct or tell them uh, and it's a great way to learn how to photograph people also the light I think is really nice we've got this soft frontal light but again look light and shade see the light most of the light is coming in from behind okay her face is a little dark but in this scenario it just works but look at these little pools of light light on the shoulder slightly darker forearm the way the light on her fingers is making those shapes light and shade light and shade it's going on everywhere it's bringing out the text is in her dress and also it's making the smoke of the smoke bomb stand out a bit more it's making it a bit more smoky if you can have light coming through something <coughs> translucent it works really really well great photo Graham. what else let's just have a look and i really apologize anyone whose images i'm skipping over because you know you've got some really good stuff going on here um, but I'm not going to be able to talk about everything Shari Turner <laughs> I like your idea I really like your idea you have you've, you've kind of got really two colors awesome the thing I really like about this is the position of the bird it's, you've caught just the right little moment it's like if the bird was just sitting there like a, I don't know, stuffed bird, for example. Um, I don't think it would work quite so well. It's like the bird's sort of like got something taking its interest. It's like, so what's going on over there? And it's 
paying attention to something, quite like the twisty wires too. The difficulty you've got here, Shari, is that you've got a very dark subject against a very bright background. I think you could have increased your exposure a little bit and just brightened the whole shot up because it would have got a little bit more detail, a little bit more shininess in that beady little eye. Who is it who said it's creepy? Sue. <laughs> totally get it. And that's one of the things I like about it. I like the fact you've caught that moment when the bird is looking over its shoulder, but also the way you've composed it, the way you, you've kind of got the bird up in a corner. You've not been afraid to use a bit of negative space down there. But I think you could have allowed the background a bit brighter and increased the exposure a bit. Now, it is entirely possible that uh, Sherry's camera, her light meter, whether she's on an auto mode or, 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 or manual, even on manual, the light meter probably says you've got the exactly the right exposure. But the thing to remember is your light meter doesn't know how bright something is. It only knows that its designers have told it the entire world is grey. So what do you do? You have to argue with it sometimes. You know that that could do a thing a bit brighter. So never be afraid to give it a bit more exposure. Now the light meter might be going, no, you're overexposing. Light meter doesn't know how bright you want your picture, so don't be afraid to argue a bit. Interesting shot. Really love it, Shari. <clears throat> what else have we got? Let's just have a little scoot down here a bit. Get bridge shot upward in a driving car. Kodak Gold 35mm. Wow. I know that film is having a renaissance. It's cool. I get it. I like your idea and, and all those shapes and repeating patterns. And you've, of course, got three colours. You know, well done. It's, it's like you have, you have looked out, you've kept your eyes open, you've done a great exercise in seeing. I think the image could be a little stronger. Now, if you're doing it in a car that is moving, really hard thing to try and do. But look, you've got these great triangles. Look, we've got one, two, three triangles. Now, if if you could have been able to sort of keep that line straight and, and had the three triangles, one, two, three, and then you've got these two uprights between them, but it was all kind of straight. When you have a very graphic subject, it kind of needs to be very flat and graphic. When it's off a little bit, it tends not to work quite so well in my experience. But taking it from a moving car is not an easy thing to do. By the way, I also, something I like about this, this little bit of lens flare. Now, I know some will say, oh, lens flare, bad, wicked and wrong. I don't mind a little bit of lens flare. To me, it says sunny days. So, um, yeah, don't have, don't have a problem with that one, to be honest with you. Hey, Gert, I started film because I've had some creative breakdown. And this seems to really up the game. Awesome. Yeah, there are many plus points, by the way, to shooting with film. Because when you're shooting, you know, with a conventional digital camera, of course, you can chimp the back. You can go click and look in the back, click, look in the back, click, look in the back. You can't do that with film. And so it forces you to think about what you're doing. Um, because you can't look at it afterwards. You have to really think about it and think, OK, so what do I need to do? I need to do this, I need to do that. You can't check it. And also, of course, there is a cost attached to that. Um, you know, long time ago, when I didn't have grey hair and was learning about photography, every time, you know, if I took 36 frames, that cost me £10 by the time I bought the film and had it processed and developed and looked at the prints or had the slides done. That's £10 every time you go click 36 times. It makes you think. It really does. <laughs> Kurt said don't start about the cost it's true but there are many benefits I once had an argument with a friend of mine who is a teacher at a uni and said why do you teach them on film they're never going to use film she said for those reasons and it hadn't occurred to me um, sorry Gert honestly Gert's wife it is so cost effective to shoot film trust me Steve You've got some nice ideas here. You really have. I like the shapes that you found. I really, really do. And it's kind of this weird, mossy, enchanted sort of um, wood that you have happening here. 
you have got some quite nice little pools of light. You know, look, again, light and shade. These, the light is all sort of coming in from above and, and it kind of works on this. I think our problem is, I don't know how you could somehow separate it out a little more. For me, it's just a little tiny bit too busy and I find those little highlights a bit distracting. I'm kind of wondering whether or not it might have worked quite well with a slightly longer lens, with a narrower field of view. And it might, you could have maybe isolated a couple of shapes and still got the feeling of just what this wood is. You know, including some rocks. I'm not talking about zooming in, right in on something. I'm just thinking about maybe shooting much the same framing, but with a longer lens, if you could have done it. Um, because it might have compressed it a bit more and given you a little bit of depth field to play with. But nonetheless, um, I think it is a great, uh, well done for seeing it. And, and there's loads of potential in here. If it's somewhere near where you live, I strongly recommend go and give it another go. Oh, here we go. You've got your thing here. Sorry, I didn't notice. D750, 24 to 110 at 48 millimeters. Yeah. I can't help but thinking, I wonder what it would look like if you were about 80 millimeters. You know, you had some, some focal length to play with. Maybe you did. Just my thoughts but it's still a really great shot and I'd kind of like to go there. It just looks really engaging and interesting. I thought this was interesting, Jane Barnes down there in New Zealand. Um, it's really creative, isn't it? I'm intrigued how, you know, what you did. So you've got this sort of triptych. Is, are these three frames you brought together sort of creatively, you know, in post-production or... or or, or is it something you somehow set up as one shot? But nonetheless, it is a very creative thing and it is definitely engaging and eye-catching. Um, I think it's a very interesting sort of an image. I know you're here, Jane, because you're always here. You're always the first one. You get up so early in the morning to be here. And, you know, that is real commitment, dedication to your photography. Um, great light, great colours. Nan just said that at the same time. Um, I'm intrigued as well by this background and, and the reflection of it. I, I think the whole thing is really interesting. And again, you know, this is, of course, another of the images that was in my folder. I'm thinking I've got to take some away and I don't want to, but I did. Um, great shot, Jane. Very creative. Very interestingly done. Gary just said, is it a hand in the background? It's a toy lightsaber. Look at the things you can use to make interesting shots. So by all means, correct me if I'm wrong, Jane. So what I'm thinking is, Jane has set up her glasses of, of water, I'm guessing, and then used a toy lightsaber and swept it around in the background during a longish exposure. So it's backlit the liquid. Remember what I said about backlighting the smoke bombs? When you backlight something translucent, it brings it to life. And it's the same with a glass of water because honestly, there's a little test for you if you don't believe me. It's gin, says <laughs> Moira. But here's a little thing for you to try if you don't believe me. Get a glass of water and then put it, you know, do it outside with the sun, do it with a desk lamp, whatever you do. But if you have the light coming, here's, here's, here's here we go. I wonder if I can show you this. I don't think I can. Um, I'm just having a look on my little screen here. I don't think this is going to work because the light is coming from the side. No, it ain't going to work without me messing around too much. Where's my phone? I want to try a little live experiment here. Let's see what we have got. Let's turn this flashlight on. Right. I don't know if this is going to work, but it is worth trying. So look, glass of water. If we've got the light coming from the front here, like this, and if you can see it in that little window, the glass of water is almost kind of invisible, isn't it? Let's put it over that side. The glass of water is, you can see it, but it's not great. But look what happens if I bring that light behind it. I don't know if you can see that. It's not ideal, but look, you see the water and the glass has kind of come to life. Whereas if I move the light around this side, it's nothing like as interesting. If you can backlight it, it just brings it to life a little bit. It wasn't the best demonstration, but it kind of 
said what I wanted it to, I think. Yeah, what else we got here? Okay, you set up the glasses on a long mirror. Great. See how creative you can be in your own home? Just with a few bits and pieces, some glasses of water set up on a long mirror and a, and a toy lightsaber and playing around during a long exposure. Congratulations, Jane. I think it's a really creative and engaging shot. And I thank you for posting it because I'm sure it will, you know, benefit everyone in the group, particularly some of the, you know, the less experienced photographers, because a lot of this is, is you know, about just doing something interesting, but, but simple and trying stuff out. Don't be afraid to get it wrong. I have to click on Anton's picture here because I have to say this immediately drew me. It's so simple and it's such fun. And I love the fact you thought about it, Anton. Um, so did a lot of you. Look at that. I've just realized, look how many people liked that image. I'm going to be in the bad list, aren't I? Because I didn't choose it as my winner. Um, but isn't it a great idea? Isn't that well executed? It is just such fun. I don't know if you're here, Anton. I just love it. You know, what gave you the idea? Oh, look, let's get a few flowers and just give them a bunch of flowers to hold while cycling along on the pavement. Three colours, obviously, right on brief, nice textures, all the rest of it. And I love the way you've been so careful to shoot it from directly above. I'm intrigued how you did it. Um, but it doesn't really matter. It's a great shot. Interesting, creative thinking. This is the whole point. It's not so much about walking around just going click and hoping for a good one. It's about looking around you and thinking, how can I use that? How can I use that? How can I do use that? Is there light and shade? Does it need light and shade? Or does it not need light and shade? Does it just need flat light? Because, you know, all the different types of light have different use cases. Emma Port. <laughs> You're really becoming a little bit of a, a maestro with these sort of little sort of soft looking, delicate, multiple exposure type things you've been doing. Um, I just think it's a really delicate, interesting, dreamy sort of a picture. Um, yeah, what more can I say? Three colours. I don't know if you're here, Emma. I'm just intrigued whether or not this is a post-production thing or whether or not you, you did three exposures in camera because if you did, you did it really, really well. I think it might be a post-production thing. But, you know, I like the idea. Remember, photography doesn't happen in the camera. It happens in here. Is post-production, is using software bad, wicked and wrong? Well, no. Photographers have been doing it ever since photography began. They've been sandwiching negatives in enlarges, using bleaches, dodging and burning, doing all sorts of stuff. Ben, you know, tilting the baseboard to correct converging verticals yeah, okay now you can just get an image with converging verticals and go click and it will just straighten them up for you we used to do it in the dark room we, you, you, you'd have a converging vertical like that in a shot and then when you printed it on the baseboard you'd just tilt the baseboard up at an angle and that would then correct the converging verticals it was one flower says emma great idea great thinking well done emma There are some other, you know, there are many things. Age concern, again, <laughs> I, I have to pick on this one. Good grief, we're nearly up with an hour, aren't we? I need to get my skates on a bit. Look at the light. The light is working really nicely. You have, okay, we've got one, two, three colours and, and some background. You have got some nice light. You have got a great idea. The thing that's not quite working for you are these tiles in the background. They're really distracting, that line of shadow. Would it have been possible to bring the plate further out so that the background was, was clearer, you know? It, it was clear with, with a little bit less going on. Um, great idea. I think you could have possibly used a slightly smaller aperture because we, we've got like a, a, a sharp area in here, but I think this sort of shot, it might work if the depth field went a little further. Because don't forget, it's really easy to sort of think, okay, wide aperture, shadow depth field, small aperture, lots of depth field. But don't forget there's all those little apertures in between because those are the subtleties where you can extend it down the run of beans a bit, you know, go a little bit further back. Excuse me, a little bit further forward. I haven't been on the gin, I promise. 
I'm just having a look at some comments here just to see if there's anything going on in here. It's amazing how many photographers underestimate window light. Completely true, Peter. <clears throat> window light is fantastic. It's a great natural source of light. Look at, look at the different light sources we've had. We've had cloudy sort of, you know, light coming in through trees and things. We've had Jane playing around with a kid's lightsaber. Window light is fantastic stuff. Uh, we've got light sneaking over the cliff and doing the smoke bomb and all the rest of it. Light is king. Let's have a look at another one. Now here's an interesting bit of light. Hello, Paul. I like the way you've really thought about this. <laughs> I really do. I think it, it, it's, it's, it's intriguing, you know. So, so Paul's put a light down inside here somewhere just to make that little bit of a lift here. And... Yeah, you have. You've got sort of tones of yellows and a bit of red and some black, and, and that's about it. And you made it interesting by bringing in that, that bit of flash. The only thing I would say, Paul, is I think maybe that flash is a bit too strong. If it could have been toned down just a touch, I think it may have worked a bit better. Hidden speed lights. Awesome. But, you know, look, again, someone has thought about it. This is the key for everyone who's going, mm, not quite sure why mine don't work. Notice how much people are thinking about it. So Paul's looked at this and thought, hmm, what if I put a light down here, reduce the exposure and puff a light up through here? We're going to get some interesting shapes and textures and it's going to make the dust on the windscreen stand out and the, you know, the auctioneer's yellow chalking on the windscreen. Great tones and textures, says Nan, and I totally agree. Um, photography begins in your head. Settings don't give you pictures. Pictures tell you settings, and you bring them out of your head, down your arms, and into the camera. This is always the key, and this is why it's so important to understand, you know, there's only five controls on a camera that anyone needs. Um, shutter, aperture, ISO. Shutters and apertures, they have creative superpowers. They do other things besides exposure. Then, what else have we got? We've got our focus settings because cameras auto focus it might have the word auto in it but it's not that auto you need to control it for the shot that you are taking and then focal length as you change your zoom your focal length you can completely change the feeling and the mood of an image that's all you need to know about the camera that's it the rest of it is photographer skills not camera skills it's about understanding light and composition and having great ideas that's where it all keys in and i don't know if you've seen my new masterclass in photography there is a link in the description area below but please go and check it out try a free sample i am so proud of it and some of the reviews we've been getting feedback from trustpilot and other places i'm, I'm really 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 proud of it and everybody who helped me make it and if you're struggling with some of this stuff go take a look at it because i promise i promise it will help you um, and I think be a load of fun too. What else have we got in here? Let's look at a couple more. We're heading towards eight o'clock. Okay. I want to have a little look at this. Hey, Philip. Great clouds. Great clouds. Look at that. That's a wonderful sort of shaped cloud formation. And I love the colors on on you know, the field on this crop field, the stubble of wheat field or barley field. The thing which I can't help thinking, Philip, is why did we use this bit in here, the house and the trees, when you've got this little bad boy just sitting there all on its own? You've got great use of light. I love this pool of light here. And I wonder if, if you'd hung around for a while, would you have managed to get one of these pools of light come through a blue hole in the sky, one of those little gaps in the clouds, and light up that little tree. Uh, I don't know if you were in a position to do it, but very often it's about that. But I'm just going to, okay, let's do the hand thing, people. Let's just take the hand. I just want to take the right-hand side of that picture off, where the house is and the trees, the side of the hill. Just, just, just kind of take that out for a moment. What do you think? What do you think when you just crop that side off? What do you think? And also maybe, Philip, if you could have moved around just a little tiny bit, you know, because the clouds up above the house, they're awesome. I love that fade. 
I just think it's that little single lonesome one. And if, if, if it could have had a pool of light on that tree, and it may not happen. Trust me, I have stood and watched light moving across the land so many times thinking please please land on that tree or please land on that little house or please land on the boat or the bridge or whatever it may be i've been there for about an hour um, and it hasn't done it but it's a great shot i do like it philip i just think the little tree on its own makes it stronger and the clouds more powerful Moira just said, I'm always trying, to fierce, always trying to find a single tree on the horizon. So true. Um, the professional landscape photographers that I know, they all have like their little black book of locations where there is a single tree on the horizon um, facing a certain direction and they know where the access points are. I once um, went up to the Lake District and was traipsing around trying to find some waterfalls and things and uh, I happened to meet up with a professional landscape photographer buddy of mine called Tom Mackey. And uh, we, we were having something at the pub and I was flicking through a few pictures. I said, what do you think, you know? And uh, he stopped on this one, he goes, ah, how did you find that place? Because it's on private land. Um, he, he was jealously, they all jealously guard their locations. I found it by chance because I asked in a hiking shop. Don't go to, here's a tip for you. If you want to get into doing some landscape photography and you go to a new place and you're not quite sure where to go, don't go to tourist information because they will send you to the place where you can get a silly hat and an ice cream and go for a ride on a noddy car, right? Go to the local hiking store because the people who work in the outdoor hiking stores are very often into hiking and they will know the interesting places. The tourist places, they, they, they just tell you where to go with the tourists. But the hikers, they know where the beautiful places are and how to get there. Go to a hiking place. And that's how I found this particular waterfall on private land. They told me about it and said, go ask at the house. They might let you go out the back garden and up through the, 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 the you know, and, and that's what happened. Just a little tip for you there if you're really into getting into a bit of hardcore landscaping. Let's have a little look further down because, you know, there are so many pictures. Forgive me, I am going to scoot forward a little bit more. I thought this was great fun, Shiana. Uh, <laughs> it's just good fun, isn't it? You know, how can you not smile at that? Uh, am I going to have a go at you about your photography? I'd say your yeah, light's a bit bright there. You could have gone a little bit darker, but what the hell. It's a great fun shot, and so thank you for amusing us and entering nonetheless. You know, again, look, look, she put some work into that. That's not something that was just a drive-by shooting. Dan Murray, I can see your idea. Yes, you are so, so right. There are only three colours going on here. The problem is you've got very, very hard, strong light and it's all a little bit too bright. We're not quite sure where to look, Dan. I think if the exposure was a bit darker, take that down a bit, let it go a bit dark, let the shadows go a bit black, um, that would help. And you could maybe, again, by using a, a slightly longer focal length lens, because a long lens has a narrower field of view, you get rid of stuff out the side. A long lens has a, sh has a shallower depth of field because you've got the infinity point of a long lens is further away from the front of the glass. It gives you a lot more space to play with, so you can play with depth of field. Maybe you could have done something, you know, with three colours, with, you know, a red unripe and a black ripe and some green. You might have been able to isolate it with a slightly longer lens. But I think your biggest thing here is a bit, much, a bit too much going on. Again, if you're not sure about what I was just talking about, about the infinity point, and you need to be inside that point in order to control your depth of field because apertures alone do not control depth of field they're the fine tune there are other things at play here go get yourself a free sample of the master class it's in the link in the link in the description below because we go deep into that joan bolton what a beautiful beautiful delicate picture that is um it's a great composition Great use of colours. I love the way you have so carefully lined those flowers up. 
You've got a great shallow depth of field, very careful focusing with that shallow depth of field in order to make things sharp. Um, the only thing I'm gonna say here is, I think, again, you could have argued with the camera's light meter and just brightened it up a bit. I love the drops of water. Yeah, we've got an overcast day, it is raining or has been raining. Um, either way, the light is fairly flat. It's coming from a cloudy sky from above. How do I know that? Purely because I've just been around it for a while, the light is pretty flat and even. It's all coming from all over the place across the whole sky. Um, that's a good one, Peter Knight. So it make a great Mother's Day card. I agree with you. On my screen, what I'm seeing, it's just a little bit dark. I think you could have got away with just brightening it up a tiny bit. This is one of those things. Cameras think the whole world is gray. And when it looks at something, it tells you the exposure to make it gray halfway between black and white. But sometimes you can argue with it. You just think, mm, I want it a little bit brighter. I tend to go more for bright. Some people like to go more for dark, whatever. Either way, it's a great shot, Joan. Well done. There's so many great shots going on in here. I mean, you know, really, look at them all. I think this is a really creative idea. Oh, Nan, hello, Nan. <clears throat> Isn't it a creative thing? There's just three colors and there's some nice little ripply textures going on. Um, you know, again, this is about looking around you, seeing the world around you, paying attention to the world around you. It's why you can't really do photography on your, you know, when you're in a group of people. You go out with someone, your partner, a friend, whatever. <laughs> you drive them nuts. But if you just sit, spend a moment, breathe, look around you, you notice some pretty little things. I just love that little splash of blue, whatever it is going on up through there. Uh, I'm not sure. I think the bright bit is a little bit too distracting. I don't know how you could have done anything with that but nonetheless Nan well spotted it is a nice it is a nice shot there's no two ways about it what else have we got going on here I just need to have a little look make sure I've got everything right over there I have so many cool pictures Jamie Smith again <laughs> what more can we say look at the light okay yeah People say it's bad, wicked and wrong. You must never burn out the sun. You must never have a burnt highlight. The sun burns out with your eyes, so <clears throat> ignore those people. But look at the light, these little backlighty bits. It's really simple. It is really, you know, really simple. My only thing, Jamie, is it looks to me like, is that vertical upright? I think it is. I think it could be my eyes. It is upright. It's just the angle we're looking at. It makes the roof look like it's, it's perspective fall off. But again, really simple beautiful picture and I would assert that Jamie probably increased the exposure a little bit from what the camera wanted to give it this this light look because very often we see a sunset shot and it can look just a little bit too heavy you know people have a tendency to make it really dark and try and punch those colors and like Whoa, saturate them up I'm not so keen on it myself I think the subtle often works better and I think you've done that really nicely Jamie it's got a warm warm feeling to it where else can we go let's just have a little look there's just a few more um <clears throat> right i'm gonna have a couple more here kirsten wood again i know there's so many great shots here what works about this the composition and that shallow depth of field and light <clears throat> these are the things if you're struggling a little bit really pay attention to these guys you know Ask yourself powerful questions. When you look at someone's picture, don't just look at it and go, I like that picture. Ask yourself, why do I like that picture? Where have they placed the subject? Where is the light coming from? What kind of depth of field are they using? What sort of focal length would they have used to achieve that? What aperture would they have used to achieve that? Would they have had to use a fast or a slow shutter speed? Ask yourself powerful questions when you're looking at something you like. You may not necessarily know all the answers. However, you'll be surprised what you do know if you only ask yourself instead of somebody else once you analyze these things. So let's analyze it a little bit. Kirsten, beautiful shot. What more can I say? Look at this lovely straight line running through here. Kirsten's got that leaf beautifully aligned Look where the leaf is positioned. It's not right smack in the middle of the frame. It's just sitting kind of in the middle, about three quarters of the way up. <clears throat> that 
beautiful little droplet of water is just right in front of the camera. You're not looking down at it, you're not looking up at it. It's right on eye level. These are things which work. Again, Kirsten has used a longer focal length. You can tell that just by looking at, at the field of view and the way the shot looks. She's used a shallow depth of field to tell the viewer where we're looking. We're looking at the edge of the leaf and the droplet of water. It is all these things that, that just come together. And again, look how simple it is. Very few colors, very simple shots. And I think this is one of the keys to this, this contest. This challenge is not a competition. <clears throat> was finding ways to do that. How can we not talk about our resident horror queen, Tori? <laughs> It's just a really great creative shot, isn't it? I mean, you've got to admit it, it's very much Tory style. Red and green, best mates, absolutely best mates. So we've got red and green and flesh tone, sort of pale, pale blondes, <clears throat> if you like. Called you a pale blonde there, Tory. forgive me. Um, but look, we've got red and green. Look, even this little bit of red in the hat and the lipstick and the fingernails, very, very simple. Um, again, look at the light. The hat is causing a bit of a shadow here, and that's great. The light is slightly, it's just sort of coming in from here, isn't it? Look at the fingers. Light and shade, light and shade. It's causing the shape in the apple. It's about looking at this stuff all the time, noticing what is going on. We all know, all regulars within the PLD groups, you know, you all know Tori is one of our accomplished photographers, there's no two ways about that. But just, you know, study these things and look at it. I think it's a great shot. Well done, Tori. And it's also good to see you back, by the way. You are one of the people we haven't seen for a while, and it's great to see you back again because, you know, all of you guys who are really great at this stuff, you always inspire us and, uh, you know, give us new ideas. Ian, <clears throat> three colours, obviously. I get your idea. You're going, wow, look, we've got lovely three colors, and we've got a spider's web and all that good stuff. You, again, have used a long lens and, and a shallow depth of field to sort of make us concentrate on the apples. My feedback to you would be, I think you could have made the exposure just a little darker. And the difficulty always with the spider's web, of course, is they're such delicate things. It does stand out, and I think, had you brought that exposure down just a bit, the spider's web would possibly pop just that little bit more. Right, let me just whiz on down just a little bit further. Apologies to all of you whose pictures I'm not stopping to talk about. It doesn't mean your pictures are bad. It just means that, oh, so many great shots and, you know, and others where I want to just try and help the photographer a bit. There was one further up here I wanted to help the photographer a bit. Here we go, Kevin. <clears throat> Sorry, I know I'm going in the opposite direction. Kevin, great, yes, you have seen a small piece of the beach and you have pretty much, well, you've got a mishmash of colours, but actually when you really pull it apart, there aren't that many colours there. I think the thing you've got going on here, Kevin, there's two things. If you look at this, there's very few of those light and shade things. Now, some shots work really, really well without it. I get it. But I think shots like this with these textures possibly need a little bit more of it. Luckily, you've got this big stone here with these lovely stripes, and it is kind of drawing our attention. Um, and it's a good job it's there. I really hope you pop, put it there on purpose, Kevin, because, you know, without it, it would be a little bit hard to look at. We wouldn't know where to look. I'm not sure quite what it needs. Possibly a little bit of sunshine. If it was very, very early in the morning, it might give it some more textures. Um, but it's a great abstract. Again, well looked for. Right, let's get back on track. Let's move down a little bit further. I thought this was a great shot, Stephen. Um, you know, just a sunset reflected in the shiny track lines. I like the way you've been brave enough to let that exposure go quite dark because it, it really helps, you know, to bring that colour to life. I don't know if you're here, Stephen, I need to ask, have you pushed the colours on those reds a little bit? Because to me, they look a little bit too red. Uh, I could be wrong. Some sunsets are like that. It might be exactly what's going on. Um, but I like the composition, the way it's curving through the shot, those repeating things. Well spotted. Again, 
It's all about looking, isn't it? It's all about seeing things and noticing things. Right, let me whiz on down a little bit further. I just feel I need to move on a bit. There's one or two, of course, which I can't help but be drawn to. Monica, there's things about this I really, really liked. <clears throat> I like the way you've composed it with that line, that hard line. I'm guessing it's, it's a no parking line on the edge of a curb. Um, I think that is really great and the leaves in the gutter. Now, I'm in two minds about this little bit of litter because of course it's picking up the yellow. And in some ways, the, the rebel in me really likes it. And in some ways, peace in me wishes it wasn't there. What do you think, guys? With or without that little splash of yellow litter? I'm really in two minds about it. What do you think? With or without? Please, pop something in the comment. I'm going to do the hand exercise while you write stuff and just see what it looks like. Don't know. Try it for yourselves. And then just pop something in the comments. Let's see. What do you think? What do we got? We've got widths. We've got withouts. We've got it's a distraction, but a width. It's good for a book cover. Nice one, Akimov. I like that thought. I really like that thought. Yeah, look. So we we we've absolutely divided. It. it wasn't just me. You know, overall, everyone's kind of divided with or without, with or without. I like that thought though, that book cover thought. As a book cover, it, it kind of does work well, I think, without. Again, doing the finger test. Let's just slide that over there. I think without, it's, it's, it's something that would look really interesting in a frame on the wall. It's that sort of easy to look at sort of a shot that would look great in a frame. With, yeah, I get it. It's a book cover. That's a really good thought. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, Bob's saying without the curb. Bob Williams said, lose the curb. Interesting. Let's lose the curb, people. Let's see what it looks like. The finger test, let's just, or a bit of card or something else. You know, you could use your, works quite well with my dark phone case because it sort of blends into the dark surround. No, I don't like it, actually. I like that yellow line that sort of man-made thing up the side. I think once that's missing, I don't think it's quite so good. But good thought, good thought, Bob. This is all part of photography, isn't it? It's about trying stuff out, seeing what happens. Got to say something about this. If you're here, Sean, a Sean, <coughs> because that is dramatic. I so hope you're here because I want to know how you did it. That is dramatic. Um, obviously, it is three colours. I'd say it's a little bit over bright because doing a bit darker. Uh, I'm intrigued. How did you do it? It's an intriguing, interesting sort of an image. I'm not sure if you're here. If you're here, please say something. Uh, Stephen Laws. Right, OK, those railway lines I was looking at. OK, it's the red light on the rails from you know the train signal. Um, on the platform. Got it, got it, got it. Now I know why it's so strong. You see, photos aren't always up for personal interpretation. Um, doesn't look like you're here, Sean. I'm just intrigued. Oh, I am. I use Lightroom and change the lens in lens calibration to Sigma. That's an interesting thing. I'm still intrigued as to how you shot it in the first place. Um, but probably can't go into that full discussion. Very eye-catching, very eye-catching. It's got such a wide angle feel to it. It's like, you know, you are riding on the tail of that pigeon. Really interesting, I'm guessing you had to crop it. I don't know what you did, but I do think it's a, a phenomenally powerful. Somebody else said that, what's going on here? David Hansen said it, phenomenally powerful image. Let's just move on a little bit. This is a lovely oh, our crystal. Hello. One of our crystals. <laughs> the two crystals. Um, what an easy, gentle sort of a picture it is. And again, it's predominantly simple. Very, very few colours going on. Crystal, I'm not sure the bright bit in the bottom left corner is helping too much. I 
possibly lose a little bit of that foreground but some great light that light's bouncing off the floor onto the child's face and it's kind of giving it this little happy feel i don't know about you did you ever sit under the table when you were a little kid play with the dogs <laughs> or is it just me my mum used to breed dogs we had nine of the things running around at one point right let's just move on a little bit further choose something else linda o'neill how can you not like it you know very very simple we've just got two colors really going on i like the way you thought about this and used the little bubbles i'm intrigued as to whether or not you saw the the image you know whether you saw the bubbles in your drink and then thought of a way to do it and put something blue behind it i don't know um these are the things it's all about that thinking and that's really what i'm trying to bang on at everyone about let's move a little further that's a nice idea steve it is it's just a nice simple idea you've got some great backlight um the red tomato on the yellows so simple but so effective i think my coaching to you is i'd have brought that exposure down a bit no problem with a burnt highlight when the sun hits something shiny um but I think it would have helped if the shadows were darker. It would have brought the shapes out a lot nicer. I think it could have come down just a little bit on that exposure. But it's some great light. And it's just a really simple, interesting idea. Simple images just seem to work. Jonathan. How cool is that? Yeah, I know I'm a negative space junkie. But look at those soft, gentle colours going on in this shot. And also, I love the way that... The guy and his dog, they're just in the brightest part. You notice that? These are really key things. Now, I'm guessing you're quite a way off and probably not directing this. This is something you saw. Now, whether or not you waited until he got there, or you moved to line him up so he was there, or whether it's chance, but it's one of those things that... Um, it just makes it work. And I love the way you haven't pushed the processing. You've allowed it to be hazy and misty and pastely. And I think it's one of those things that works so, so well. The way we've just got this little bit of foreground and it's just repeating lines and shapes going on. And the guy and the dog just sort of give it a little bit of interest. Okay, if I'm going to be really, really harsh and bully and be, be the coach, if, and this is an if in capital letters, um, hey, Jonathan, glad you're here. Long way off. He appeared as I was watching the sun go down behind the hill. Great. The happy accident, but you exploited it. And that is the thing. That is the key. Been great if the dog turned around the other way or sat next to his master or we had, a, instead of a dog's ass silhouette, we had a dog's head silhouette. But I'm not knocking you, Jonathan. You, you, you spotted an opportunity and you took it and exploited it to the full. Very, very great, atmospheric, interesting sort of a shot. So I want to just look at this one from Martin Smith briefly, because again, it's a light thing. Again, right on brief, simple, only three colors, makes it work. But look, see, we've got a bright and a dark, a bright and a dark. I love the angle you've got going on here with the textures and patterns in, I guess it's stone going on underneath Martin. Um, great shot, really like it. So now I think it is definitely time for us to move on and take a look at our runners up in our three color challenge. So let me just move some of my stuff around. <clears throat> Congratulations and thank you to everybody who entered. Who, you guys rock. You know, you're the ones who are putting in the work and the effort. I'm going to see if I can think up other challenges which kind of work like this because I think the end result of that challenge, and it's, it's pure chance on my part, uh, is that everybody got some much stronger images. Everybody because uh, it, it kind of worked. I'll, I'll put my, my teacher brain on and see if we can come up with some more. So our runners up. My first runner up is, don't you just love that? 
<laughs> it is Ankumar. Anand Kumar. I just think that is just such a great picture. Now, yeah, I'm not generally speaking a, a pets photo sort of a person. <clears throat> but it is beautifully executed. Well done. Congratulations, Anand Kumar. There's a lot of things happening here. So technically, there is all that stuff about choosing the right focal length to get the narrow field of view. Something else which uh, Anand Kumar's done is look how carefully that shot is lined up. Those steps are not wonky. They're not leaning one way or the other. They are nice and flat and straight. So that is working well. We got some lovely soft light. It is still directional. It's coming from above and behind very, very slightly. Because you can see there's that slight darkness on the dog's neck. Having that coconut husk there, <coughs> excuse me, it works well, right on brief, only three colors. But then on top of that, you've got choosing how much depth to fill. It would be very easy to think I'd go with a shallow one, but you didn't. You went with a deeper one, and that takes us on the journey through the picture a little bit. I think it's a really, really beautifully done shot, perfect light. And then, of course, on top of all of that, of doing all those technical things, choosing the, the, the focal length, the aperture, you know, and then, you know, you'd work for the shutter speed. Because very often you might choose, um, you know, an aperture for creative reasons, but it won't give you the right exposure, so you compensate with the shutter. And then maybe the ISO, because you might not be able to use that shutter speed, depending on how much light you've got. This could have been quite a dark place. But by playing with the camera and the exposure, you can make it what you want it to be. Exposure is part of composition. <clears throat> How bright or dark your picture is, is your choice, not your camera's choice. Argue with your light meter, people. Great shot, Ankumar. And finally, of course, the really, really cool bit of work you had to do on top of the technical is engaging the dog's attention getting that right moment because if the dog is alert and awake and interested and intrigued. If the dog was just kind of looking bored, wouldn't work. Really cool shot, really cool shot. Let's move on to my next runner up who is, yeah, one of our regulars, <clears throat> but it is very definitely three colors and it is totally engaging. It smacks you in the face, it's from Dean. Um, yeah, I know, we see Dean quite a lot, but, you know, let's face it, Dean is one of our more accomplished photographers, more experienced photographers in the group. So again, we got a shallow depth of field. We've got some really great light. That light is coming behind through those little droplets of water. I don't know if you're here, Dean. I'm intrigued how you did it, where you did it, whether you positioned these on, you know, something. I guess you've got some droplets of water on something reflective. Um, I love the textures you've got going on inside those little droplets of water. Um, it's a really great shot. Again, look at the care that's been taken with it. It's nice and straight and even. This is one of those things, if it's a little bit wonky, a little bit off one way or the other. I like the composition. Yeah, you put the important part right through the middle. The brightest part of the picture is the thing we usually look at, and that is our subject in this case. Great shot, Dean. Ahmed, I like this, <clears throat> the oil on water technique. Um, I've seen a lot of these coming through our Facebook group um, and it is a really cool technique. It is great fun. Um, you've done this really, really well and obviously thought about this to, to do the three colors. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the oil and water technique, there is a video on my YouTube somewhere. It's quite an old video that I did with a chap called Nick Jeffrey. A very long time ago, we did it in his kitchen. <clears throat> so you would get uh, a glass bowl or dish, put some water in it, and then a little bit of oil. Now, according to whether you whisk that water and oil together, and, and you get these droplets of oil. <clears throat> and when you look through them onto something below, you can get these shapes and patterns. Now, the one we did in the video, we took a piece of glass out of a picture frame, set it on top of some Coke cans. We put some colored card underneath that piece of glass and lit it with a desk lamp from the side. <clears throat> we then put our bowl with uh, 
oil and water in it and then you start photographing you get these patterns and shapes i think you've done this really really well and it obviously totally fulfills the brief excuse me <coughs> about three colors cool shot this one i just <laughs> yeah i know it's a bit of me but i do love it it is such a strong shot judith stewart i think this is this is really great there's so much distance you can almost just walk off into this picture so carefully put together look at those uprights they are spot on upright all those diamond shapes running up through the picture very very few colors very very simple uh, i love that little human shape right in the middle now i noticed judith you said something about that little human shape is you taking the picture so i'm guessing there's a mirror going on here and this is why we're getting this this such depth such a huge amount of depth to it <clears throat> i think it's great yeah i totally get that ej session just said judith i want a copy of that picture it's a great shot i totally agree with you it is it's it's an intriguing interesting beautifully executed picture and i love that little cluster of lights i like the way you've composed it and it's quite dark as well and and it just works well done congratulations i think it's a great shot our final runner up in the three color challenge is eric i just love looking at this i like the way you've captured not only a three color shots nice and simple but you've also captured that feeling of all the birds in there you know is it called a murmuration i think it is <clears throat> it's not a murmuration it's not the shapes in the sky i know but you've just got this feeling of all these birds on the move flapping and going um i think it's a lovely lovely shot eric very soft gentle colors what do we got we got some oranges orangey yellows we got some blues and we got some blacks that's about all uh, very simple well spotted well executed so it's like eric has found a shutter speed so that you know the landscape isn't blurred it, there, there's not enough for camera shake but it is slow enough that you've got that movement in the birds and it gives the whole shot that feeling of movement that excitement of all those birds heading home in the evening they've had a belly full of worms and now they need to sleep it's uh i think it's a really great shot yeah, there's a bit of noise and stuff going on in there. Now, I don't know whether that's where you had to do some stuff in post-production a bit or, or whatever, or whether you just had to shoot at a very high ISO because that sun has already gone over the horizon. We can see that. There's no shafts of light across the water. That is going to mean probably a very high ISO. I think it's a great shot. I don't care if there's a bit of noise and grain in it. I just get the mood and the feeling of the whole thing. <clears throat> and so that of course brings us to the picture which i just kept coming back to over and over again and shows as my favorite i guess that's the way to say it not a winner my favorite photo from this challenge it's the one that kept capturing my attention just before we we go into it i just want to remind everybody if anybody wants to make a donation now is a good time to do it because we are going to be finishing in a moment if anybody wanted to buy a sticker just to help keep these challenges rolling any help is always greatly appreciated and uh my favorite shot from this three color challenge was kimberly fullwider i just think that is such a great picture i totally get that little frog sitting there waiting for a bug by the light look at the light look at the light and shade we've talked about light and shade such a lot this evening we really really have and i think this is a great example this is the sort of shot where a burnt out highlight doesn't work because you wouldn't see a burnt out highlight on a shot like this oh my goodness said kimberly no it's a great shot kimberly i just love it so did lou by the way here at new milton photographic when we, we, we were both going over them, we both went, I'm looking at the frog again, yes, so am I. I'm looking at the frog again, yes, so am I. <clears throat> I think it's a great shot. A burnt out highlight on this shot wouldn't work 
the exposure is absolutely spot on for this. We've got a great balance of light and shade. And the way it's washing along Froggy's face and catching the eye, you can feel how alert that little frog is. Looking around, hoping, waiting for a nice tasty bug to come along and be supper. I think it's a really great shot. I also just like the angles. Look at the composition, look at the angles. Look where Kimberly's positioned the little frog. The eyes were half closed. Oh yeah, 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 I can see that. Maybe he's eating a load of bugs already and he's getting sleepy. I think it's a beautifully done shot. Just two colors, it's all coming from that yellowy light. Um, and to me, it works. I like the, the, the strong man-made lines, the verticals, the straight lines against that natural and also again look at look at the um, look at the textures the light is bringing out on that little frog congratulations Kimberly I think it's a great shot and from what we can see in the comments lots of people also think it's a great shot you've all produced some amazing pictures <clears throat> in this challenge um, I'm blown away by it I think it's great and I'm so glad that that idea kind of gave you ideas and, and inspired a few more of you to sort of enter and give it a go. If you're someone who watches these challenges from the sidelines a bit, please get stuck in, give it a go. Because in other areas, not just in the PLD, <clears throat> in other things that I'm looking at in which PLDers join in, I'm noticing, I can't help but notice a definite increase in creativity compared to some other photographers um, <clears throat> I think you're doing a great job I think it's brilliant so thank you all for being here tonight for joining in for your comments for your donations to try and help us keep this ball on the road it's been a total pleasure speaking to everybody don't forget if you are a little curious and not sure about the photography thing Click the link in the description area. Go check out my masterclass. There's a free sample, a whole bunch of stuff you can try for free. There's value just in the free sample. Go check it out if you're not sure, because I promise you it will help. Total pleasure. The next challenge will be live very, very soon indeed. The email, which those of you who have signed up to the email list, which you can do on the PLD page, link in the description area below. <coughs> you will get notifications and, and a little email from me when each challenge goes live along with reminders of dates and things this is a fairly long one because <clears throat> i am probably going to be away for a little while uh, but anyway the dates will be in that email and of course uh, when we post that next challenge thank you hans tea with honey that sounds good i'm going to go home and get some in a minute and get some supper once again it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Thank you for taking part. Thank you for pushing yourselves and sharing all your fabulous images. I look forward to next time. Take care.